Four years ago, legendary assassin Fable killed a group of men involved in a ring dedicated to kidnapping women to make them work the night. Every kill was quick and secret until the last one. The criminal was behind the wheel when Fable gets him, and his body accidentally fell on the car controls, making it move. What Fable hadn't noticed was a kidnapped girl named Hinako on the back seat, who was now trapped inside a vehicle out of control. Not wanting innocent people to get hurt, Fable jumped on top of the car to rescue her. After lots of struggling caused by the car gaining speed, Fable managed to climb inside and pick up Hinako to then jump out of the window right before the car fell from the parking garage into the ground. Fable and Hinako landed on top of another car, and after making sure the girl was alive, Fable fled. Nowadays, Fable isn't working as an assassin anymore. His boss told him he became too dangerous and ordered him to live an ordinary life without killing or there would be consequences. Therefore, Fable has started using the civilian name Akira, has rented an apartment with his partner Yoko while pretending to be siblings, and has gotten a job at a design company. There, he works with his boss Takoda, designer Misaki, who used to be a pin-up girl, and designer Kainuma, who knows about Misaki's past and is still obsessed with her to the point of having his entire room covered with her pictures. None of Fable's co-workers know anything about his real identity. Meanwhile Hinako is in a wheelchair because of the fall four years ago, and after her parents' death, she was taken under the care of Yutsubo, the president of a non-profit organization. In front of the public, Yutsubo presents himself as a sweet guy that cares for people with special needs, especially children, but when he's alone with Hinako, he takes advantage of her. He also scams parents by framing their kids as criminals and asking for money to send these bad guys to rehabilitation centers in other countries, when actually he kills them and buries them in the forest using an excavator. Yutsubo has two guys working for him, expert assassin Suzuki, and scammer Asaki, who Suzuki thinks isn't trustworthy but deals with him anyway because Yutsubo thinks he may have important information since Asaki used to work for Fable's agency. It turns out Yutsubo was the real boss behind the illegal ring Fable won against four years ago, and now he wants revenge. One afternoon, Hinako goes to the local park to use the monkey bars, hoping that some exercise could help her walk again. She starts at the highest bar which causes her to immediately fall, and this is seen by Fable who is passing by. He tells Hinako that is indeed possible for her to walk again, it'll just take lots of time and training, but Hinako thinks he's just a random creep and leaves. Later when he returns home, Fable asks Yoko to remind him of the details behind his mission four years ago, which immediately confirms his suspicions. The girl from the park is the same girl he saved that day, and now he's feeling guilty about her disability. The next day, Fable returns to the park to watch Hinako falling at the bars again and advises her to start at the lowest bar. However Hinako still considers him a peeping creep and returns home, where she rants about the weirdo in the park to Suzuki, who promises to take care of this weirdo. In the meantime, Yutsubo and Asaki have decided their next scam victim will be Kainuma, and their plan consists in using his obsession with Misaki. They show up at Misaki's and pretend to be investigators that specialize in finding bugs and hidden cameras, telling her they're here to check her apartment when they're actually going to install those cameras. Sometime later, Fable goes to the park again, but instead of Hinako he finds Suzuki, who hits Fable and asks him to leave Hinako alone. When Fable returns to the office, Takoda gives him a new task to do, they've designed some flyers for a non-profit organization and Fable must deliver the final product. This is how Fable ends up at Yutsubo's place, and when Hinako recognizes him, Yutsubo invites Fable to come in after making sure to hide his computer with all of Misaki's hidden camera recordings. Yutsubo is touched to hear Fable cares about helping Hinako walk again and looks forward to working with him in the future while Hinako still considers him a creep, but when Fable shows how socially awkward he is, Hinako warms up to him. Afterward, Fable goes home and tells Yoko he's met Yutsubo, who he was supposed to kill four years ago together with the others but his boss cancelled him at the last minute. He wonders if he should kill him now, but Yoko reminds him they aren't supposed to be doing that anymore. The following day, Hinako returns to the park and uses the lowest bar like Fable told her to, this allows her to stand up without falling. She's incredibly proud of herself but unfortunately, Fable isn't there to see her, or so she thinks. Fable is actually hiding behind a tree, not wanting to be seen as a creep anymore. Meanwhile Yutsubo pretends to be a detective while Asaki plays the role of Misaki's agent to carry out the next part of their plan, unaware that Hinako has come back from the park and is listening in the hallway. They've invited Kainuma and his mother over to accuse the guy of having installed cameras in Misaki's apartment, presenting the recordings they've made as proof. Kainuma denies everything, but his mother knows him well and believes it, so she's willing to pay money to settle the manor without a scandal in court. Later in the evening, Kainuma uses a knife to destroy his pictures of Misaki, swearing revenge because he thinks she framed him. The next day at the office, Kainuma can't stop himself from losing control at the mere sight of Misaki and attacks her, but fortunately Fable is there to quickly knock him out. Not to worry Misaki, Fable pretends Kainuma was going after him, and while they talk, Kainuma wakes up and escapes. When Fable tries to follow him, he finds Suzuki taking Kainuma away in a van. Suzuki warns Yutsubo that he was seen by Fable, so Yutsubo tells him to take care of him, 
which is heard by Hinako through the door. Moments later, Suzuki hands the van with Kainuma to Asaki so he can go looking for Fable, who is already waiting for him. Fable gives Suzuki 24 hours to bring Kainuma back if he doesn't want consequences, then he goes away, leaving Suzuki wondering who this guy actually is. Afterward, Suzuki calls Asaki to make him force Kainuma to give him Fable's address. Then, Asaki stops the van in order to relieve himself, giving Kainuma the chance to escape. When Asaki returns to the van, he's shocked to see his prisoner is missing and starts the vehicle to go looking for him, but it turns out Kainuma had been behind the van, and now Asaki has run over him, instantly killing him. Meanwhile Suzuki goes to Fable's apartment, which he recognizes as belonging to a secret agency. This finally makes him realize who this Akira guy really is, but when he gets inside and tries to threaten Yoko into confirming his theory, he doesn't realize she isn't a civilian and puts his guard down. This gives Yoko the chance to quickly overpower him and knock him out before her stew burns. When Fable comes home in the evening, he finds Suzuki tied to a chair and takes the chance to make him call Asaki in order to release Kainuma. After hearing Kainuma is dead, Fable lets Suzuki go, which greatly crushes Suzuki's pride. Since killing Asaki is punishment for his mistake, Suzuki goes to see Yutsubo to tell him he's found the legendary Fable. Suzuki doesn't think Yutsubo can take on Fable and needs a good reason to attack him again, so Yutsubo explains that the guy driving Hinako around four years ago had been his brother and his death has been haunting him since then. This is all a lie to make his backstory more dramatic and Suzuki buys it, promising to help Yutsubo kill Fable but only if they make a decent plan. Once again, all this is heard by Hinako from her room. The following day, Hinako returns to the park to keep practicing on the bars and when she falls again, Fable approaches her to help her massage her legs. Hinako starts to wonder what kind of life he used to have when suddenly, a shot is heard and Fable falls dead, only for Hinako to wake up and realize it was all a dream. At dinner, Hinako tells Yutsubo she knows he wants to hurt Fable and asks him not to do it because Fable is a friend that has given her self-confidence. To change her mind, Yutsubo tells Hinako that Fable was the assassin that killed the guy in her car four years ago and also her parents, mentioning the method he used to prove he's researched Fable well. In the morning, Hinako asks for a gun, so Yutsubo gives her an empty one, promising bullets later once she gets used to the responsibility. Then, Yutsubo calls Fable and tells him to come to his office in an hour to discuss Hinako's future. Fable accepts and ignores Yoko's warnings about this being a trap, he already knows that but he has to go anyway to face his guilt, but Yoko can come too for backup. When Fable makes it to Yutsubo's place, he immediately can tell there's a grenade waiting for him behind the door, so he jumps into a different balcony right before Yutsubo's apartment explodes. Suzuki is watching from afar and sends a whole squad after Fable, including setting up a sniper and a bunch of assassins on a set of scaffoldings. Fable rushes from apartment to apartment, quickly knocking out any enemy that gets close enough. Eventually he tries to take a shortcut by jumping between the outer walls and has no trouble knocking out the men that follow him there, but as soon as he reaches the ground, he gets another call telling him a bomb has been left with a deaf girl on the 10th floor. Not willing to let a kid get hurt for him, Fable begins climbing the scaffoldings, and whenever a thug tries to attack him, Fable uses a special gun Yoko made for him that shoots fake bullets capable of knocking out but not killing. Meanwhile Yoko is trying to go after the sniper, and the little deaf girl is going out to the balcony to catch a stray balloon. When Fable finally makes it to a balcony, he finds himself surrounded by more men, and he has to fight them all by jumping into and out of the scaffoldings to keep them guessing until he can finally make it to the 10th floor. The sniper can't shoot yet because the kid is out, and inside her apartment, there's another thug waiting for Fable who starts a fight as soon as he sees him. This hesitation allows Yoko to find him and knock him out. In the meantime, Fable is wasting too much time with this fighter and it's giving the chance for more thugs to come closer. Needing a quick solution, Fable decides to throw a grenade at the scaffolding to make it come off the wall and leave all the enemies hanging. With the other guy off his back, Fable rushes to rescue the girl, dragging her back into the apartment right before the scaffolding finishes falling, only to discover there's no bomb in her backpack, it had been a lie to bring Fable into the trap. At that moment, Fable notices Suzuki leaving and calls Yoko to give him the model of the car so she can follow him. Then, Fable stops to grab a bite and call some of the agents from his agency to ask for a ride. Moments later, Yoko finds herself in a forest, and Suzuki gets to capture her by pretending to throw a grenade at her when it was actually a rock. Yutsubo and Hinako are there as well, and after Suzuki ties Yoko to a tree, Yutsubo gives Hinako some bullets and asks her to shoot Yoko to practice. To everyone's surprise, Hinako shoots Yutsubo instead, but he turns out to be fine because he's wearing a bulletproof vest under his jacket. Hinako accuses Yutsubo of being the person that killed her parents because he knew the method the killer used, which nobody knew outside the police, and Yutsubo admits it's true. Hinako's parents had proof of Yutsubo's involvement with the night worker ring and he had to kill them before they went to the police. Hearing this makes Hinako have a breakdown and fail all her following shots, but since Yutsubo keeps taunting her, she forces her body to stand up and leave the wheelchair to try to reach him. 
Hinako barely gets to take two steps before Suzuki stops her with a warning. There's a landmine right under her feet, and if she moves it'll explode. This stops her from moving but she still shoots her last bullet, which pushes her back. Fortunately Fable shows up just in time to catch her and prevent her from activating the mine. Suddenly, Yutsubo throws a grenade, thus Fable shoots him to make him fail his aim and covers Hinako with his own body to protect her from the explosion. Then, he asks Suzuki for help, because he knows he's an assassin with certain limits like him. Suzuki accepts, and after freeing Yoko so she can keep an eye on Yutsubo, he drives the excavator to cover the area with a landmine. This allows Fable to quickly pull Hinako away, and the two of them get pushed back without getting hurt, thanks to the excavator bucket containing the explosion. Finally giving up, Yutsubo throws a grenade at them, causing Suzuki to react by instinct and kill him with a quick shot. The grenade doesn't explode because Yutsubo never activated it, it turns out he just wanted them to shoot and ends things for himself. After burying Yutsubo with the help of the excavator, Fable and Yoko try to leave, but first Hinako forces her body to awkwardly walk in order to hug Fable and thank him. A few days later on Christmas Eve, Fable receives a letter from Hinako, who asks him to burn it after reading it. In this letter, Hinako explains that four years ago she had run away from home after a fight with her overprotective parents, and her naivety made her an easy target to kidnap. She never held a grudge against Fable because the day he saved her from a dark future, and now that she's working hard on her rehabilitation, she hopes she can see him again in the summer when she can finally walk again. As Fable burns the letter, he hopes he can see her again as well. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.